Hey folks, like I mentioned in the last video, uh, my video from at this point, I think it was a couple weeks ago, but maybe it was early last week, um, got a whole bunch of uh, views. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about this whole Sharewell end of life thing and uh, dive a little bit deeper into some of the concerns and, and things you might wanna consider as you're, as you're planning out your transition. Uh, so the last video uh, was all about thinking about the nouns and verbs that are in your uh, system. Go ahead and check that out. I'll leave a link down in the video description. Um, and this is th today's video will actually be the first of three videos this week. Um, and I'll, I'll leave links to the future videos uh, when they drop. But if you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to the channel because next week, uh, next Monday to be exact, I'll actually have a video out uh, d giving a demo of uh, one of the things that will really ease this transition. So uh, stay tuned for that. I'm excited about it. I've been having fun building it. Um, and uh, I think it'll, it'll make a world of difference for every one of you. Um, this will be a, a, a breath of fresh air, a sigh of relief. Um, I don't want to give too much away because I, I, I want you all to tune in on Monday. Um, but trust me when I say it'll be worth it. All right, in today's video, I want to talk about uh, specific business objects and uh, what business objects to keep, what business objects to uh, transition into a new system, uh, and what business objects to just throw away. Um, and obviously the, the age old answer is it depends. You know, every organization is different. Um, and you, it's going to be a custom solution for you versus someone else. Um, we all know that's the answer, but maybe we can do a little bit better. So, um, the th the thoughts that cross my mind when I think about this is uh, there are definitely certain business objects that need to transition from Sharewell into, you know, obviously the other system isn't going to call it business objects, but the new system has to be set up in a similar fashion to the way Sharewell was set up because you want it to support your workflow. You don't want to have to change your workflow just because you're using a new new tool. Uh, you know, depending on the size of your organization, it can range anywhere from just being irritating to downright prohibitive. prohibitive. So we want to avoid that as much as possible. Now, the question as to whether you can import some of your configuration, and in this case, I'm thinking mostly things like lookup tables right? Uh, whether you can import them directly into the new system or you have to rekey everything. Um, you know, in some cases you might, you know, it might not be that big a deal if you only have a few items in the lookup table, you know, rekeying them, not that big a deal. At the same time, that's also the situation where an import would probably be quick, simple, you know, not, not that much uh, pain. Uh, but if you're dealing with significantly sized lookup tables. Those are the things to keep in mind and make a decision as to whether you need to import them uh, as is, maybe export them from Sharewell, clean up the data a little bit, you know, remove old ones, add in new ones, use it as an opportunity to make sure that the data is, is up to date uh, and then import it into the new system. Um, so that's, that's, one, that's one kind of use case, one scenario. Um, next thing that comes to mind is things like uh, incident, all of these historical records uh, that you probably need to keep around uh, at least for, um, you know, just reference purposes, right? You don't want, it, it's, it's awkward when a customer calls in and says, hey, I called, you know, three years ago about blah, blah, blah problem. And you're like, well, we've changed systems. I don't know. Um, eh, that's, it's not insurmountable, but it's a little bit awkward, right? You want to have that, that historical record, um, you know, even if it's not in your new system, which ideally it would be, uh, you know, uh, I've heard anecdotally, uh, when onboarding people onto Sharewell, uh, the data from old systems, the incident data was imported into like a, a new business object, like old incident or something like that. Um, and obviously that enabled all of the search and query features of Sharewell 
on that old incident table. So that's an option, doing something like that. Uh, at the very least, having that data around so that it's accessible would be nice, uh, but it doesn't necessarily have to be imported directly into uh, what, uh, what the new system does as far as incident tracking. I mean, I don't think. Uh, you know, every business is different. So maybe for you, it is worth the trouble of going through an actual import process, migrating uh, those incidents. Sorry, I think I'm gonna sneeze. Hopefully that'll wait till the end of the video. Um, importing incident into, you know, the, the new system's actual incident table. Um, that might be a little bit painful, but if that's what you need to do, that's what you need to do. And, you know, your, your implementation partner or, you know, one of us freelancers um, can certainly help you with that. Uh, let's see. Okay, so that's things you want to import. That's things you might want to keep around. Things you might want to throw away. Um, geez, I mean, th that's really going to be... Uh, uh, organization specific, right? I, I'm trying to think like major incident problem change. I mean, maybe you want to keep that around, you know, kind of on ice, just, just, uh, for reference, but it's not something that you're going to be referencing, you know, every single day necessarily. Um, oh, another specific category is, uh, your knowledge articles, knowledge base, right? If you're not already using a separate tool, I know even a lot of people who were using ShareWell, uh, didn't use ShareWell for their, their knowledge base. They used a specific knowledge base tool already. If you're already doing that, well, you're kind of ahead of the curve here. Um, but if you're not doing that, you can either go with one of those, those, uh, those tools and obviously potentially import ShareWell knowledge articles into this, this other tool, or, uh, you can, uh, import the, uh, the ShareWell knowledge articles into whatever your new tool, if it, if it does knowledge. Uh, but that's something that you want to keep around. That's probably, in my mind, that's the most important thing to keep around because, uh, you know, while incidents, you want that historical record, in some cases for legal and compliance reasons, you need to keep it around. Um, it's not necessarily in an easily consumable form, either for uh, support agents or for uh, customers. Whereas your knowledge base, that is, that's been curated, uh, you know, hours and days and years have gone into curating your knowledge base. Uh, and you don't want to lose that just because you have to move off a tool. So I really should have started with that. Like knowledge, absolutely. That's, that's where you start. That's the thing you want to find a home for as soon as possible. Um, but those are really all those, the situations I can think of. Uh, if you can think of another situation that I haven't covered, go ahead and drop it in the comments below. Let's start a discussion about it. Um, if there's something you're already thinking about doing, you know, a specific type of business object that you're already planning on, on importing or uh, moving to a different system or building some tooling around, uh, drop, a, drop a comment below. Let's, let's, uh, let's share this knowledge. Um, and again, Keep, keep your eye out for that demo video coming uh, next Monday and subscribe so you'll see the other two videos that are dropping this week. I'll see you in the next one.